What's up? You look demented. I have so many voices in my head, Sheila. The constant chatter is so tiring. I don't know what to do. It's it's not unique to you, you know that, right? Thank oh, God for that. <laughs> All of us have got a chatter in our head, which happens. You know, the other day I had some friends over for lunch. And uh, they were all sitting and there was a lot of chatter going on. And when I was watching them, because I was trying to get them to come to the dining table finally to have lunch, they were talking so much. One person talking to the other, other person, everyone cross-talking, no one listening to anyone. So much of cacophony, so much of cacophony. And that is exactly what happens in our head. Because there are so many people living in our head. Do you realize that? Oh, how much do I realize that? The constant chatter is never ending. Yeah. And that actually is the topic for uh, this show. The voices that you have in your head. Intro please. Hi there. You're listening to Spirituality Sideshow. Where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. So Shiva, you're saying that there are a lot of voices in our people's head. Everybody's head. Yes. So what are these voices really? Who are these people? Okay. So, have you ever tried, you know, you, you're dressing up and you're going out for a party mm -hmm. and you look at yourself in the mirror and there is a voice which says, you're wearing this? Do you have that? <laughs> this is a phase that launched no ships. <laughs> have you noticed that? Yeah. Have you looked at your stomach? Can you wear something looser? You are going to trip and fall on those sandals. There is a constant chatter which is happening in our head. And this doesn't happen just when you're going for a party. Whether you get up in the morning, whether you are in the bathroom, whether you're looking in the mirror, whether you're working in the office, whether you're talking to your partner, this voice is continuously in your head. And sometimes you can recognize it. Sometimes you know it's a, it's a voice of your mother, it's a voice of your father. Sometimes it's your own critical voice. You remember? You call it very kindly, you call it the inner ding. Inner ding. But this is not the inner ding that I want. The inner ding. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> because inner ding is that one peaceful, nice voice that soothes your soul. Yeah. But the inner bitch is like howling and yelling all the time. Before this only, when we just started, my mind was, the voices were going like, are you sure you can speak on any topic? Are you sure will people listen to you? That's why I just riled up and went up everywhere. <laughs> you know, the thing is, a lot of people think that the voices that are there might be of our parents and once the parents pass away, there's no more voice. But the thing is, my mother has, has been gone for 10 years and even today, I hear her voice in my head which says, are you going to sleep so late? How are you going to run a business if you're going to be if you're going to be lying in bed all the time? And this is a constant voice which happens. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I think somewhere it starts setting into your system. Do they believe, become your beliefs also at times? The words which are constantly said and the words which we constantly repeat to ourselves become our beliefs. And then we start acting out our lives based on those voices. Now these voices, the, there is one voice which is constant, which is a judgmental voice, which judges everything. It judges us, it judges the other person and it judges the situation or circumstance that we are in. And everyone has a judge. Now the thing is, it's it was okay to have had a judge because when you were young, you really needed to know what was right and what was wrong. But today it's no more like that. Your judge sits there and constantly tells you that you're not good enough, that you will not be loved enough, that you will love, that you will die lonely, and that you know there is nothing you can do which is going to make a difference in the world. Your judge constantly stops you from following your dreams or living your life as your most authentic self. True, and I think these voices can be uh, from the point of view of fear as well, which is one of the things that stops us so much more and yes. lets us not try new things. Yes. So so Sheila, this is something interesting I wanted to share with you. I was listening to this gentleman called Ethan Gross. He works in the psychology department of University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And they specifically study about self-control, developing self-control. So many psychologists believe that self-talk or inner, inner voice is central to developing self-control as humans, in beginning from childhood. That is, that is true because uh, that is where parents give instructions to the kids because the kids are new and they really don't know anything. 
So as parents or as caregivers, there are instructions which are given. Yeah. Eat on time, go to bed, eat your greens, walk straight, don't laugh so much, don't talk to strangers, except yeah. on the internet. <laughs> so we, we are given a lot of the instructions and you are right because if you notice really small children, you will see that when they are playing, they talk to invisible mm -hmm. people. They have invisible friends right. and all the time they are repeating the things which the parents are saying. Right. Which is what I think uh, Ethan Cross was, was yeah. talking about. So he was talking, uh, he, he says uh, in his, uh, he says in his uh, interview that uh, children eventually start using those words to regulate them and their own actions. Yes. They're trying to develop self-control within themselves. Yes. But the problem is that eventually over a period of time we uh, uh, you know collect this repository of things that uh, we hear from our parents and caregivers yes. who of course didn't uh, who always meant well didn't mean no harm but they said things like don't cry because boys don't cry mm -hmm. or you know sit like a girl why do you want to take so many risks why do you want to do something different and we like really obedient children yeah. kept uh, developing self-control with all these statements as well not trying to evaluate how relevant are these things to us uh, to now in yes. this really moment can we afford to take risk why not yeah. so uh, that's where that self-talk starts becoming very detrimental to us mm -hmm. and that leads to building up a lot of anger frustration in adults who really can't find the comfortable spot for themselves to understand that okay this is serving me now and this is not serving to me and the sad part of this entire thing is that you know, when we speak to ourselves, we are so unkind. We would never speak to a friend or even a stranger mm -hmm. the way that we speak to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if a, if a friend comes to you and says, you know what, I'm never getting married. There's no person who's ever going to love me. What are you going to tell her? Yes, that's absolutely right, <laughs> you stupid bitch. Who will marry you? You are so unlovable. No, we try to soothe that person and we say no. I mean, any person would be lucky to have you. That's but what about ourselves? We look at ourselves in the mirror. Oh my God, look at this lines under my eyes. I've become so fat. I look 20 years older than my age. Why did I eat that pizza yesterday? Yes, look at these flaps. I have no self-control. We can go on and on and on beating ourselves up. I always believe that it is exactly like those... Uh, you see those people walking on the road with a whip. No. So they come to collect money, they are all in this grass curve oh, yes. and they are dancing and they do rrr, 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 boom, boom, they keep they self flashing. Self -flashing. Yeah. Yeah. So we, that's what we do on, an, on a daily basis, regularly from the time we wake up till we go to bed. We are constantly self flagellating ourselves. How unfortunate of us. Yes. To not know that there is another way. Absolutely. And there was this thing that we were, I was reading on as a part of achieving happiness and maturity is to alter our inner voices, knowing yes. that we, we can do the same. Yes. We can bring about a much beautiful, much more supporting self-conversation. Yes. It's very simple to change these voices. It's not easy, but it's very simple. I was listening to this coach called Kirk Duncan, who had a very lovely method to change your inner voice. No, really. He was talking about, let's have a table. Okay, invite all the people, all the voices which are there in your head, invite them onto a dining table, onto mm -hmm. your dining table. So now if I were to look at it, on my dining table would be my mother and my father, on my dining table would be my sister, on my dining table would be every friend who had a statement to make against me. Yes, there, there would be relatives and on my dining table of six, there would be at least 20 or 30 people <laughs> filled with the capacity on that table. And now, these are all the voices that are going on. All the voices yeah. in my head. Okay. So like my father says, oh my God, you're so clumsy. <laughs> and why would you want to do this? We are good employee material. Why do you want to set up your own business? These are all voices that you have. You cannot do it. How long will you do these things? How long do you want to continue doing it? You are not good enough. Give up now. Give up now. So all these people, if I were to invite them onto my table, and I would look at each of these voices and see which of these are serving me right now. Now, there might be some voices which are really good for me. Yeah. Maybe that mentor of mine who said, you have it within you, you just have to do it. Another two years and you are set. Maybe that a mentor told me that. 
Maybe my father had a nice voice, a positive voice, and he encouraged me to do it. So all those voices which are positive, you can retain it. All those ones which are not serving you anymore, you give them the pink slip and fire it. Say, okay, <laughs> now I don't need you on my table inside my head. I don't need you because there's a committee right inside. Right. Right? Now, instead of that, what we can do is what uh, Napoleon Hill talks about, the mastermind in your head. Mm -hmm. and that's a very good thing because there what you do is you invite the people who will give you the correct advice. You need not know them in person. Mm -hmm. For instance, on my table, if I fire all these people, on my table, I would have Oprah. Oh, wow. yeah, I would have Robert Kiyosaki. I would have Robin Sharma. I would have all these people who I look up to and admire. And every time I have a problem, I can then look at it and say, okay, what would Oprah do in a situation like this? What is the advice that Robert Kiyosaki is going to give me in this situation? And then look at it. That voice then becomes much gentler. And that voice becomes much more empowering. Of course. But I think I'll have to read up a lot <laughs> about these people <laughs> to even know whom I want on my table. So probably I'll start slow, Sheila. Okay. Probably I would like to start with doing, making some conscious changes like saying some affirmations. In yeah, the that's, a, that's a very good idea. I would love to maybe just go and stand in front of the mirror and say, I love myself and let the voices shut up. <laughs> but just saying, I love myself. I can do it today. This is such a wonderful day. It's meant to make me successful today. I think probably it sounds so unrealistic, but I think eventually when I keep doing it on a daily basis, it might sink in well. Actually, mirror work is a very powerful exercise because when you're looking into your eyes, and saying things like, I'm successful, I can do this. I accept myself exactly the way I am. It starts creating a different neural pathway in your brain. Right, right. And that allows you to work or that allows you to actually start coming out from a much, much powerful place mm -hmm. than from a place of criticism and negativity. Right. I, I have two more ways, okay, Sheila, that I want to try, okay? One is, I want to give the voices in my head, a personality that okay. I like. Okay. So, for example, if I give them Michelle Obama as a personality, can you imagine Michelle Obama saying, go die somewhere, you look so bad? Of course not. She seems to be kind. You know, if you want to go kinder, try Mother Teresa. She, you can never picture her saying something like, go die, you look so fat. <laughs> so, I want to give one personality and probably imagine if that person can say these words to me, then they're valid, otherwise they're out of my brain. Yeah. So that is one thing I want to try. And second thing, I was watching one uh, these talk shows that you have, uh, uh, Kemil, Jimmy Kimmel's talk show where he tried uh, Morgan Freeman to <laughs> speak with after inhaling helium, okay? okay? And he sounds hilarious. I want to try that voice. I want to give that voice to my inner voice. <laughs> While Morgan Freeman is on helium, and he's talking to me so funnily, I will never be able to take life or these voices seriously. <laughs> you, you can do, there is another thing that you can do which is very simple, which is every time a voice talks in your head, imagine it has become a rat. Okay? Oh. So you take that rat and in your mind put it into a bottle and then cover it. So the rat will continue squeaking. Quick, 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 squeak. So, and then once you shut the bottle, you cannot hear the squeaking of the rat ever again right? interesting so this is something uh, that we can do you either picture it as a rat or you picture it having the voice of donald duck da ah, you so scrooge <laughs> yeah and so these voices will actually start start changing the way that you're thinking about yourself mm. now the thing is these neural pathways are very small it's like you're planting these seeds with the affirmations that you say regularly in the mirror you're planting seeds now when these saplings come up you have to look after them. You have to nurture them with kindness. Sure, sure. It's just like any new sapling comes up, you can't put it in a dark room or pour hot water over it. What is the hot water that we normally pour? It's criticism. Mm -hmm. right? So you look after it, be kind to it, give it that sunlight of your warmth yeah. and then nurture it because then that voice can become stronger and it becomes much, your negative voice becomes much weaker. Yes, and uh, you know, that's what a lot of these motivational speakers say that if you're 
if you have a baby one infant and you can choose what kind of food to give them for their body to grow healthy would you give them a pizza would you give them an ice cream an infant 6 months old similarly when you know that your brain is just like that infant and every thought that you're feeding that brain is actually becoming what you growing is what you become yeah. so would you like to give it healthy thoughts happy thoughts kind thoughts or would you like to give uh, them all the toxic thoughts that you're not good enough this you can't do and or you choose to actually avoid all of them put them in the corner say thank you very much for your opinion but i am going to go the kind of way mm-hmm. and if you know that is one thing that you need to do for yourself as a choice that you have to make for yourself yeah. to live a much more happier life absolutely because you can never get never totally get rid of all the voices in your head they are filled with other people's voices they are filled with other people's opinions and most of them are places where you've really bought into their opinions and voices right and like you said about the infant when you when you know that you cannot give unhealthy food to a to an infant we can start with using a much gentler voice to the infant on that right from childhood if a child is brought up nurtured with love nurtured with kindness and much less criticism you know you remember the the theory that we had of catch them doing right yeah. when you catch kids doing right they grow up with higher self esteem much more sorted much more centered and much much higher happiness quotient true when why wouldn't you want in inner voice that is gentle kind and speaks to you in an unhurried way and treats you very kindly like a child you know why not why does one have to be always like i am going to win this war and life is a big game for me and no let's let's take it slow let's take it easy yes. and one more thing i was reading i was listening to this uh, show by michelle obama right she was giving interviews about her new book mm-hmm. and there she says that she is given the situation she is in she has always been so fearful of what people speak about her mm-hmm. she was the first black lady first lady you know it's not yeah. the journey was not easy the position was not easy either yeah. so she was always very fearful of what her family what her kids will go through and her kids were very young when they went to the white house so she said that it took me so much time to identify whether this fearful voice that is playing in my head is actually going to lead me is trying to safeguard me because fear absolutely has that whole idea of trying to keep you safe yes. or is it just pushing me in a dark alley and not letting me go anywhere mm-hmm. so introspection of your thoughts at the end of the day journaling at the end of the day in the morning setting intentions helps you so much to keep yourself safe also see these voices are not always bad for you yeah, they're not your enemy they're not your enemy exactly it's just that you don't have to let them overpower you so it's your friendly your friendly yes so giving them their own share of voice but you choosing which thoughts you want to cultivate in your head i think it's a brilliant way to control the inner voices in your head and let them work for you absolutely on this note we are so glad that you could join us with this episode hope your idle chatter in your head reduces a little bit reach out to sheila or gitika for more conversations all the details are in the bio we'll be very happy to have a conversation with you until next time see you bye bye